Good morning guys. I'm going to be putting together a series of videos on fishing the flats here in the Florida Keys. Um, kind of break them down by spe uh, species and almost by down to technique as well since I kind of try to specialize and try to get better results that way rather than jumping all over the place. But uh, anyways, um, during the winter time the two premium targets in the flats um, are barracuda and sharks and the ones that people are tend to target um, in the shark category are the lemon sharks. Uh, they're a bit of a larger species and they start coming up uh, during this cold peak time frame and you'll see them from four foot, six, eight foot uh, all in a couple feet of water so it's very interesting and uh, very neat to fish for. Uh, there's different ways of catching these um, the way I'm going to be doing it is uh, catching uh, jack crevels and using them as a dead bait. Uh, try to catch nice little 12 inchers and then use them for chum as well as to uh, just hook them there. Since I'm doing it on the flats, I'm not going to use them as live because uh, it's kind of a hassle trying to keep them uh, in track of them on such skinny water. So I'll be just doing uh, butterflying them up and sending them out on balloons, um, but you'll be able to check that out. Uh, I'll also be using some of my heavier duty rods um, because sharks are pretty big and then they can uh, mess stuff up uh, I'm not too fond of losing my lures and breaking my rods and reels and stuff so I don't often target the bigger ones um, in which I'm going to be doing with the light tackle although it's it's, it's totally feasible to do um, a lot of guys will throw big poppers and uh, on light tackle and that works fine um, as well as the crank baits and so forth but uh, I'm just hesitant about trying to retrieve a lure out of a eight foot shark's mouth so usually they're one and done and that's money I don't plan on losing and I'm kind of a bait guy so I can catch those for free and it, it doesn't uh, cost me anything and so that's what we're going to kind of target um, where I'm going to go is mainly any of the flats around um, these outlets are really well work really good because it's just food pushing through and that's kind of a partial reason why uh, these fish are coming up in these uh, flats areas there um, where I'm going to be targeting targeting is just east of the shark key outlet and this flats area here um, I like this area because uh, it's very productive and a lot of species are inhabit here the sharks I like because of this cut right here um, over here we have the channel there's a lot of coral heads in this area here in fairly deep water and then there's a distinct um, rise from uh, the flats with a drop off down into some um, a deeper water here so I'm going to be setting up just uh, right up in here and just up on the edge um, usually the way it works is this flats during low tide will be almost uncovered to the point where maybe an inch or two to the the uh, the grass being actually exposed and then the area I'm going to be fish is maybe at low tide maybe a foot but then when the tide co starts coming in this will fill up to about two foot and this gets to be about four foot so what I'm going to be doing is or what happened to happen on this trip is is when I made it out um, it was just coming towards the end of the low tide so it was almost to the lowest point but still water going out and then uh, so I decided to just fool around try to catch some bait and got into some other stuff and fishing over here and then when the tide turned then after a little while I started coming in um, originally I was going to go for bonefish which would have been a perfect time frame but by the time the evening came the clouds moved in and uh, it got kind of darkish and then it, it's virtually impossible to uh, sight fish when the uh, clouds are uh, covering the sun and then it was towards the evening time and the sun was going down so what sun there was was glaring so it just wasn't really a good time to do the bonefish so I just stuck with the sharks but uh, anyways that's the ticket um, it's a great 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 thing to try uh, if you're just coming down here you don't have to go very far um, just chum them up use a uh, uh, big circle hooks with a wire leader and try some big chunk and bait and just chunk them out there and these are big sharks so you can kind of paddle around if you could stand up it's a much better and just look for these big scary uh, shadows moving through the through the uh, shallows alright well anyways uh, check out the video thanks
Uh, the first step is a catch bait. I'm targeting a Jack Cavell in the shark channel. I'm using these uh, little gulp uh, jerk shad. Of course the first uh, cast out and I hook into something massive uh, goes straight down and um, I'm thinking it's a snag so I pedal on over there to try to free my lure get it right above it start jerking on it and then this big ass eagle ray jumps out probably 20 feet away and then starts jumping and flying right towards me and you can see in the water the foam there's three distinct uh, puddles where it was coming right at me scared the crap out of me and then another half an hour of fighting that stupid thing trying to get my lure back Would have liked to have picked up about a half dozen of these 12-inch uh, Jack Cavells, but uh, I was catching a bunch of everything else, snappers, groupers, grunts, but uh, this was only uh, one good one that I could pick up, so I just ended up with one bait for the day. So here we are on the flats, uh, basically just drifting around in the current, in the wind. Uh, this perspective is using my camera pole, so it gets us up to about 15 foot. Uh, very important uh, while fishing the flats is the ability to stand on your kayak, um, being able to uh, use your uh, paddle to push yourself around or you're uh, having a push pole. Um, but that visibility is huge. Uh, sitting down on the flats is almost uh, useless. You can barely see anything except for maybe a couple feet around you and uh, you're not going to be able to get on anything that way and just blind casting is very ineffective. So one of the things is, is uh, learn that skill. It's an invaluable tool and uh, just feel comfortable of pulling yourself up, standing there and being able to cast uh, accurately. For the sharks, uh, dead baits in particular uh, scent is very important. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting off a fillet entirely on one side so that I have one for my pitch rod and just throwing a a nice little fillet out of anything that swims by and then the rest of it I'm just going to use as a whole piece and just uh, cutting lines down the, the meat side to release more juices. As soon as I got there, there was a pair of uh, six and seven footers uh, just kind of cruising by occasionally. So I wanted to uh, just to have that pitch rod to be able to see if I could uh, get one uh, hooked up that way. The rigs I'm using is my. Uh, trolling stand-up rod, um, running a 65 pound braid down to a 80 pound mono leader. Um, I've got about a 70 pound uh, stainless steel leader. Um, this one happened to be um, my rig I use for uh, kingfish. So it had a, uh, a large circle hook with a, a stinger treble on the back of it. 
Um, good generally for uh, larger uh, live baits, but since it was on the pole already, I just kind of used that. And then using a balloon to uh, float it across, just blow up a regular balloon and then tie it on the line at the proximate height that you want the bait to float down at. Only had the bait out for maybe a couple minutes when uh, it got picked up. Uh, as soon as it hit the bait, the, the balloon popped, so I knew I was going to have something on, something good on. Um, made some uh, pretty bad mistakes right off the bat in that I was kind of lazy and didn't get prepared while I was sitting there. It just happened so fast. Um, I had the rod, the spinning rod in the way. Um, I uh, didn't have my... Um, a detachable release anchor all ready to be just thrown off. I had it kind of tied off instead of just loose so I could flick it loose. And the biggest mistake was that I didn't have the Mirage Drive in and ready to pedal. So what happened is is the shark picked it up and start running uh, backwards and to my right. And what happens is as soon as I put the uh, drag on it, it started pulling the drag but I couldn't get the front of the kayak pointed towards it so I could take some of the stress off. And then if you watch the uh, lever drag, I, I put too much drag on it and um, I shouldn't have. The problem was that in that short time frame it ran off about 300 yards of my braid and I was down to the uh, the backing already on the reel so I kind of over uh, dragged it and then it uh, stripped the hooks. Um, so just kind of rookie moves you just got to kind of have your when you're dealing with big fish you just got to have your uh, all your stuff ready to go because uh, any anything weak points where it will just uh, glaringly show up and I only had the one bait and then the uh, it was starting to get a bit rocky out there with the wind picking up and started to rain and uh, there was a double rainbow out there, which was nice, but uh, I called it a day. Um, I'll be back out again, uh, rig up a couple more uh, better uh, shark rigs, and uh, try to get some uh, more bait this time. Uh, if I could pick up some uh, a big barracuda for bait would be good, or ladyfish. Um, but uh, jackarvels tend to be pretty easy, but uh, you never know about catching fish, so you can't bank on anything. Um, anyways... That's just one of uh, hopefully a few different uh, videos about uh, fishing the flats in the Florida Keys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.